In this video, I'll be showing you how to solve quadratic equations on your TI-84. This also helps for factoring most of the time. We're going to use the handy quadratic formula, which works for complex numbers, which I'll get to later, but most of the time you're dealing with real numbers. The quadratic formula is not built in on your calculator, which you think it might be, but with a little programming knowledge, or if you just follow along what I do, you can create a simple program which will solve quadratic roots. I'll be using a TI-84 emulator, so you can see the key press history on the right. I'll put the source code for the program in the description of the video, but you won't be able to directly copy that to the calculator. I'll also put a download link for the complete program so you could just transfer that to your device. Hopefully you remember that the quadratic formula is given by this equation, and it solves your quadratic roots for x1 and x2. The part under the square root, b squared minus 4ac, is known as the discriminant. We're going to calculate that first and store that in a variable d. Then since there's a plus and minus, you have x1 and x2, where you add the discriminant and where you subtract the discriminant. These are going to be two separate variables. In the calculator, you need to press program, and then we want to create a new program, and you have to name it something. I'm just going to call it quad. You need to make sure that the alpha key is still highlighted, so you can get the actual letters instead of the functions of the calculator. On the first line, we're going to prompt the user to enter three variables. So you press program, and then one to the right to get IO, which is input output. 2 for prompt. Then you want to press alpha A, B, and C, separated by commas, so that you prompt the user for three variables. Then we need to calculate the discriminant. That is given as B squared minus 4AC. So B raised to the second power minus 4AC. You do not need to type the asterisk in between them because they're variables. We want to store this with the STO key into a different variable alpha d. Now the first x solution, given by negative b, and doesn't matter if you do plus or minus, I'm going to do plus. The square root, which is the second of square, alpha d. We're going to take the square root of the discriminant. This ends the numerator part, divided by 2 times a, end parenthesis, and the second parenthesis, and now we need to store this in another variable. I'm just going to choose e because it's next letter in the alphabet, but you don't have to. Now we need to calculate the second x value. It's almost identical, negative b, except this time we do minus the square root of d. And we still have to divide by 2a. And the second parenthesis, and store this, okay, let's say f. The two values for x are now stored in e and f. Now we just need to display. So that's also an input output function. Go program, write. Instead of prompt, we want to display them this time. E, comma, F. The program is complete. You can just do second mode to quit. And now let's run the program. Enter to execute. Do not type anything here yet. You have to press enter to actually enter this inside of the program. You're going to be entering the coefficients here. And 1x squared plus 0x minus 4. This is a difference of two squares. It gives you the two solutions right here. If you wanted to factor this, you'd have to change the signs. So this would be x minus 2 times x plus 2. Another example, x squared minus 2x minus 8. And of course, you need to remember to change the signs if you're factoring. So that would be x minus 4, x plus 2. Now what happens if you enter a non-real solution? 1x squared plus 0x plus 4 you get an error non-real answers. That's because it's trying to take a square root of a negative number. This isn't the end of the world. You can go to mode, and right now we're in real mode. If we change over to a plus b i, and execute the same thing, now we get negative 2i and 2i. So it factors for you, as long as you're in the imaginary numbers system. However, I usually prefer to keep it in the real numbers so you get a warning when you've done something and you're getting an imaginary solution. Now for a sort of strange case, if you have 2x squared minus 11x minus 21. This does give you the actual x solutions. However, this thing actually factors as 2x plus 3x minus 7. The reason it says 1.5 is it said the 2x plus 3, and it set that equal to 0, and it solved it. So sometimes this won't exactly be helpful for factoring. Just a few more complex solutions. Say you had 1, 2, and 3. This gives you the answers. However, the reason I like to keep it in real mode is you might miss the fact there's an i at the end. And this one is a very bad example, because you can't even see the i at the end. 
but x squared 0x plus 36 does work very nicely. And those are just a few examples of how to use the program.